Hey, welcome to my reading vlog. So I kind of just decided that I was going to vlog on and off for about a week. I was thinking like whether or not I should start it today because tomorrow I'm going to be really busy and then today's Wednesday. And then obviously over the weekend, it's hard for me to film, but I was like, I'll just start it. I'm just going to check in when I can. But the most exciting part of this vlog is at some point in this vlog, I'm going to have a cover reveal for my first traditionally published novel. Now, if you follow me on other social media, if you are a part of my newsletter, you've probably already seen it by the time this comes out. But I did want to like have it be special in a YouTube video as well, because I love the community here this much. And I feel like I get so much, so many really kind words from everyone about my publishing journey. So for the vlog, these are the books I'm currently reading and what I think I might read over the next week. So the first book I'm currently reading is on my Kindle and I'm like blanking on the title right now. Summer in Skagway? Something like that. Let's get the exact title. Summer in Skagway. And um, I'll put the cover up right here so you can see it. I am 39% of the way done with it. It is a uh, about a man named Tanner who lives in Alaska in Skagway, which full disclosure, I picked up this arc because I uh, have been to Skagway and I loved it there. I went there on vacation. It's like very much a tourist destination for people who are going to Alaska. And um, he has like a crazy ex and decides to put a ad in the classifieds, like old school, for a fake fiance. Um, his ex doesn't live in Alaska in, in the winter, so he had like all fall, winter, and spring to find a fake fiance, and his fake fiance is Mackenzie, who is from Seattle. She's a professor. She got fired from her part-time job, and she needs money because uh, she pays for her grandma to be in like a nursing home. And um, it's a very light read so far, which I'm enjoying. The one thing I didn't love is it started right off the bat with Tanner talking about his ex, like she's like the hottest one in the world and how different his fake fiance's body is from her, which I didn't love that, but that's okay. But at this point now you get that his ex has a lot of serious issues and um, is very manipulative, but I'm liking it. It's a good book to read before bed. That's basically what I'm doing is I'm reading it to unwind because the other book I'm reading right now is Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. And honestly, I think later today, I do have a lot to do today, but I think later today, I just have to like binge this. I think I need to binge this because I'm literally having anxiety about reading this book. Like I'm having literal, actual, I mean, I do have generalized anxiety disorder, so this is something that I deal with, but I'm having symptoms of my anxiety about reading this book because I am so concerned about what Iris and Roman are going to have to go through in this book. So I think I just have to like read it so I'm done with it. And I already Googled like whether it or not it'll end in a way that I'll feel satisfied for. I didn't Google specifics, but I needed to know whether or not I would feel okay about the ending. So, and I will. So I'm okay about that. And, um, but so today's Wednesday, so I'm assuming in the next couple of days, I'm going to try to read like maybe, let's see, I'm on page 113 and there's four something in this. So I've got about 300 pages left. So I'm hoping in the next two days, I'll read like 150 to 200 pages of this. And then Friday and Saturday, I can just finish it depending on what my schedule looks like. And then I'll just be done with this book that's stressing me out. <laughs> After I finish that, I think I'm going to read Skylight Confessions next because I tend to very binge read Alice Hoffman and I want to binge read a book. Um, the month of February, I did a lot of like house stuff because I had not done any in January and I was going to paint my dining room this month and I decided I'm not going to. March is going to be a month for me for writing, for reading, for getting marketing done and all that kind of stuff. So painting the dining room is on the back burner. And I was going to paint this room, but honestly, it would take me so long. I'm considering hiring someone to paint this room because I just, it'll take too long. I can't do it. I don't want to. <laughs> okay, so before I wrap up the intro and then check in with you in a little while after I've read something, I'm going to show you the books I got from Book of the Month because I just got my package. So first, my pick was Listen for the Lie by Amy Tintera, which is a um, thriller with uh, about two women who were like best friends when they were younger and then one of them 
maybe killed her best friend. And now it's years later and there's a podcaster like uh, investigating, reinvestigating the case. I think this is going to be extremely fast read and I'll show you why. It's 330 pages, but a lot of the text is like this. So I think I'm going to fly through this book. So I might read this one next after I finish um, Skylight Confessions. So you might get a little bit of this in my vlog, depending on how long I have this vlog go. And then I also got The Great Divide by Christina um, Enriquez. This is about, I think that's how you pronounce that, Enriquez, right? Um, this is about the building of the Panama, Panama Canal in fictionalized form. And I did buy this hoping my husband and I would both read it. And he was like, I don't know if I want to read a fictionalized version of it. So hopefully it's really good and then I can force him to step back from the weird basketball biographies he reads and try to read something a little more mainstream. I'm just joking. Whatever you read is fine. I love that he reads those weird books about basketball players no one's ever heard of. And then lastly, for my book of the year choice, I got Shark Heart, which I have told myself I am not going to read in March. Wow, it's going to be a really quick read because a lot of these pages just have like a little bit of words on them. But um, I'm going to... I'm going to hold back on this. I have heard people say they read it in a day. So it's 405 pages, but I guess a lot of these pages don't have much text on them. I think I'm going to hold back for this one for, you know, if you've been following me for more than nine months, <laughs> you know that when the weather is really nice, sometimes I like to pick a book I'm going to read in one day and park my chair in the corner of my yard, like really get it into a bush. So I'm almost becoming part of the landscape and um, enjoy. Um, I do live somewhere where this, the cicadas this summer are going to be absolutely apocalyptic. So um, yeah, that starts, I think, at the end of April. So I'm really hoping we have a warm early April so I can get some of my outdoor reading time in because otherwise I'm going to be kind of stuck in, well, not stuck inside. I'll still be out, but I can't imagine it's going to be that relaxing to read outside with swarms of cicadas everywhere, which is what May, June, and July are going to be like here. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, so that's all for now. And um, I'll check in with you later today about what I have read. See ya. sitting on my bedroom floor I have a mountain of laundry to fold <laughs> you know what I feel like that's something that when someone says I'm gonna have a lot of kids what you should say is be prepared for the sheer amount of laundry you're gonna have you can't even see all of it that that is a very deep pile <laughs> and I read a little bit more of ruthless vows and it is just stressing me out so hard that I'm like skimming it so I don't know what's wrong with me I'm getting so stressed out by this young adult book. It's like, I don't know, it's like I can't enjoy it because I'm so stressed reading it. So uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm almost done with part two. Yes, part two. It's in four parts. I'm almost done with part two. So my plan for today is to get through part two. I have like, I think I have like 30 pages left in part two. Get through part two. Just going to get through it. At some point, I got to fold this laundry first. But then I'm going to sit down and I'm going to read it before my kids get home. I still have to clean a little bit downstairs. It's fine. I can figure it out. But then for the rest of today, I am going to read Summer in Skagway and just chill a little bit so that I don't have a flipping panic attack over a bunch of fictional characters. They're not even my fictional characters. Oh, my God. I mean, I guess I never panic over my fictional characters. Why don't I give you a little teaser right now about my book that's coming out? That book... That is coming out. You're going to see the cover for and all that beautiful stuff is coming later in the video. Um, there is a part of it, which for the first time ever, one of my critique partner writer friends told me she cried reading it. And it was like the best feeling in the world. It just made me feel like so validated as an author that something I wrote made someone cry. And I did cry writing that scene. And after you read it, if you're going to, you'll totally be able to tell. And a little funny story is I was working 
on this scene for the first time ever was before the pandemic and I was at the library and I started getting so upset writing it that I had to leave. <laughs> it is quite sad. It's still a romance, so don't worry about that. This is a scene that's in the middle of the book that is quite sad and made me cry. Not the first scene I've ever written that made me cry because I used to. Oh my gosh, what year would this have been? This would have been like 2006. I wrote the first book in what was going to be an epic fantasy series that I had planned out. And then I outlined... It was going to be a quartet. The, you'll never see this because literally when I like look back and write at this stuff, I've lost most of them, most of my notes, but like that initial, it's it's so crappy. It's so crappy. But there was a very sad part and that, that did make me cry when I was writing it. And um, so this book isn't the first, but this is the first well-written book with a sad scene that's going to make you cry. I don't know. Maybe you're going to comment and be like, I've read The Wolves of Leuven and something in that made me cry. Which, tell me if it did. That would make me so happy. <laughs> okay, time for me to do some laundry. And I'll update you again at some point today with what else I've read. See ya. Okay, I'm back because I just wanted to show you the, the pure extent of this. Of this laundry pile. Wish me luck all. Wish me luck. Four kids, babe. Four I'm kids. making a questionable decision right now. I'm going to read some of Ruthless Vows outside. Even though I read a little bit after I checked in and cried already. This book is going to destroy me. Okay. I already quit. <laughs> I can't read this outside. There are children playing in my yard. And I'm just going to go sit out and watch them. And not read because I don't want to go upstairs. I don't want to take my boots off and I don't want to go upstairs and get my Kindle. Good morning. <laughs> so it's Thursday morning. Everybody's out of the house except me. My oldest just got on the bus. He's the last one to leave in the morning. And um, I didn't read a ton after my attempted reading outside of Ruthless Vows. So I didn't read any more of that. Of this after that so I'm on page 197 which is in part I'm like I started part three and I am still just having a lot of anxiety while reading this I think what's hard is that I want to just sit down and binge this I have like over 200 pages left though and just be like done with it but I, I don't really have time to do that today because I have to do like other stuff when the kids are gone, like writing and like other work that I have, not just sit and read Ruthless Vows, even though that sounds good. But I am going to try to read like a hundred pages today so that I can finish it tomorrow. It's good. Like it's really good. It's really heart wrenching and good. And like, it's hard to talk about it without giving away um, stuff that's in Divine Rivals, but it's got this thing where people are separated which really gives me bad anxiety and I don't know if it's it might just be my husband and I were long distance for four years and maybe that's why I, I get like so uncomfortable reading that because I hated that <laughs> but um it's a very good book I don't want anyone to think that you shouldn't read it because I'm having such a hard time reading it because it's stressing me out but on the other hand I grabbed my kindle so I could tell you exactly what percentage I am but I gotta try and turn it on with one hand because I'm not using my tripod as I'm sure you can tell, because this is very shaky. I read some more of Summer in Skagway last night. And um, before bed, not much though. I'm at 45% of that. And that's just like, you know, right now. And I think in the last clip, I accidentally called the main character Mackenzie. It's McKenna. In the last chapter, Taylor and McKenna had both kind of admitted they find the other attractive. Um, and... McKenna's kind of like, well, maybe I'll just have a summer fling with this guy I'm pretending to be engaged to. But so far, that's just like really like fluffy and light and seems like a good relaxing romance to read. Nothing that's going to stress anybody out. It's the first in a series of like seven or eight about this family. Well, how many siblings are there? There are six siblings. So it's probably the first of six because Tanner's one of six. And it's all about romances that take place in Alaska. So, um, otherwise, on the agenda today, I have to clean a lot, and I am going to write a lot, and I am going to uh, do an announcement on Twitter, and after I do an announcement on Twitter, maybe I'll come back and tell you all my book news.
Okay, I'm sitting in my official booktube spot, which seems a good place for an official announcement. So I am very pleased to announce to everyone that you can now pre-order The Hedge Witch, book one in The Witches of Star Island, my first traditionally published book. Here is the beautiful, beautiful cover, and I'm going to leave it up way longer than I leave covers up because I'm obsessed with it. Why wouldn't I be? It's amazing. To give you a little bit of an intro to not only this book, but the series, it's quite a bit different from the other things I've written. So if you've read my Wolves of Leuven series, this is not like that. This is a paranormal romance. It's rooted in our world. Our main characters are Laurel Bay and Owen Davies. Laurel is the third of five sisters who are all witches and they live in a cottage on Star Island, which is a fictional island that's about 50 miles east of Nantucket, <laughs> but there's nothing there. <laughs> and she is a tarot card reader by trade and she is a hedge witch by destiny. She and her sisters are performing a spell, one Beltane in May, and they hear a voice that gives them a prophecy that over the next six months, half of a year, they will all face great danger and meet their soulmates. Now, Owen Davies is currently living in Maine and he is a son of a witch which is a non-magical boy child of a witch. And he is part of the Davies Water Witch Clan, which is an extremely powerful clan of witches in North America. While he is not magical, he has some weird things he can do, like sense storms, and he knows he will recognize his soulmate when he sees her. He just hasn't found her yet. One night, Laurel jumps into the Hedge World, which is another realm that only hedge witches can access. And she meets her soulmate from a past life, and sees him from a past life. And then she becomes absolutely obsessed with trying to find him in this life. On that path, she runs into an extremely vengeful witch who wants to hmm, do some very terrible things to her and she doesn't remember why. So the story goes from there. You've got Laurel and Owen trying to find each other and Laurel trying to figure out why this witch is after her. It's the first book in a series of five about the Bay Witches living on Star Island. And I hope you all really love it. It's been such a lifelong dream of mine to be traditionally published. Yes, I've indie published and that's fantastic and I love being an indie author, but having a traditionally published book come out is just something I've dreamed about since I was like literally in second grade. And now it's finally happening. Down in the description, I will put all the links you need to pre-order if you'd like to, or if you want to add it to your Goodreads TBR. And if you haven't signed up for my newsletter and you are an ARC reader, please do that because I'll definitely let my newsletter subscribers know when ARCs are available. And there you go. The Hedge Witch by me, Colleen Delaney, coming out May 14th, 2024. Um, it's Thursday and I just finished <laughs> Ruthless Vows. And honestly, I did need to just binge it. Hear my kids coughing. I need to go make dinner. It was beautiful. I did cry. I'll give you a better review in a little bit, but I did want to tell you I read over 200 pages today because it was so good. Five stars. Okay, we're doing a morning check-in and just if you ever wondered what does Colleen's hair look like when she wakes up, this this is this is the answer. Um, <laughs> so I didn't do anything to it. I haven't even brushed it yet. So this is what it looks like. Yeah, and everyone wonders why I write about witches. <laughs> Okay, so yesterday I binged the heck out of Ruthless Vows. And I think that was smart because I was like so just like anxious. So I can't remember exactly. I think I was on page 196 the last time I checked in, the beginning of yesterday, and it was 417 pages. So I read over 200 pages and I loved it. I loved it. I read that book and thought about how if this series had come out when I was like between the ages of 16 and 25, this would have been my entire personality. Um, here's, I think, why I like it so much. My favorite books, which there aren't that many of them, but my absolute favorite books are historical romantic fantasy. Now, this is not a historical. We're in a different world, but Rebecca Ross used a ton of I thought World War I vibes. You get really early 1900 vibes, but there's magic and you're in a different world. But like the war correspondent, the trench warfare that's going on, the typewriters, the old school newsroom, that felt very early 1900s to me. And so it felt like it had a historical vibe. I can't, I don't want to give you any spoilers in this because I do think if you're interested at all in this duology, it's probably 
the best duology I've ever read. I haven't read that many duologies, but I cannot think of one I've liked better than this. Also, you know me, I am Miss Off YA, and I really like this. And I think part of the reason I really like this is as someone who is a children's librarian, I do feel, I have feelings about the sort of over-sexualization of some YAs. I think that, and I can't speak widely on Aquatar because I only read the first one and I thought it was fine, but where I am right now, I didn't want to devote the amount of time it would take to read that entire series. But what I've been told about later books and how spicy they become, in my opinion, that's just an adult fantasy book that wants YA money, which is fine. That's not Sarah J. Mass's choice, how her books are marketed and what section they go in a bookstore. I think that Rebecca Ross wrote YA appropriate sex into a story, if that makes sense. Like it's, there's sexual encounters in this, but they're sensual encounters, encounters, if that makes sense. They are written in a way that I feel like is appropriate for teenagers to read and not feel like, is this the stuff I'm supposed to be doing? Okay. Let me just step off my soapbox. <laughs> this is like a topic I've cared a lot about since Breaking Dawn came out when I was uh, independent. I worked at an indie bookstore and I literally, we had a midnight party and I hand sold, you know, whatever, a hundred copies of Breaking Dawn to a bunch of 12 year olds. And then I went home and read it and was like, oh no. That's like, all I could think was like, oh no, this is what they're gonna think relationships look like. And then that's a very different thing because of the whole like abuse physical abuse aspect of it. Back to Ruthless Vows. It was wonderful. Definitely a five-star read. Divine Rivals was a five-star read. Loved them both. I hope they make a series because I don't reread books very often. So I don't know if I'll actually ever reread them, but I'd love to go back into that world. So I would love to watch, you know, a Netflix or something, Hulu series or whatever. I would get Hulu for this. Next, I was very preoccupied with that all day, but then last night I did want to read to unwind. And so I read a couple chapters of Summer in Skagway. I didn't bring my Kindle downstairs, so I don't have um, the exact percentage I'm at. I'm not that much further. I think it was at like 45% yesterday. I'm probably at like 55, 60% today. And I have a very spoilery thing I want to talk about. So if you're going to read this book, jump ahead till I'm not in this background because I'm not going to talk about anything else while I'm sitting here. And here's it is, because it is spoilery. So right now in the story, uh, McKenna and Tanner are um, have decided that they're gonna like have a fling together and they're not gonna have emotions involved. And so they're gonna sleep together for the first time. And it's very hot and heavy and like, you know, a lot's happening. And then they go to have sex and Tanner is adamant that he wants to use a condom and McKenna is adamant that they don't. She says she doesn't like them. They don't feel as good. She says something about like she gets itchy, which is interesting because then they're like, oh, is it a latex tax allergy? I have friends with a latex allergy. That's not what happens. So she's like, I'm on the pill. I'm this, I'm this. And then she talks him into it. And that really bothered me so much because he talks about how he had a pregnancy scare with a girlfriend when he was in high school and so he never does this he did he did it one time there's pregnancy scare so he never does that and I really didn't like that she kind of bullied him into it not you have a latex allergy that's fine you know what you two are probably not in the point in the relationship then when you should be having sex you could do, you were doing lots of fun stuff before. You can continue that fun stuff. And then maybe when you're in a committed, not fling type relationship, you could broach the subject of having sex without a condom. So that just really, ugh, it rubbed me the wrong way. I don't really know why it's in there. So the chance is I'm only at, you know, less than 60% of the book. This could be an accidental pregnancy book, which then I would understand why it was put in, but I don't like at all that she sort of like pressured him into it because if you were ever reading a romance novel where this was flipped, it wouldn't be a romance novel, right? If there was a hero who was like, I don't like them, it doesn't feel good, they make me itchy. First of all, if that ever's happened to you in real life, I'm sorry. And 
that's like not good behavior at all. That's like, let everyone be as protected as they want to be. So that kind of gave me a little bit of like, nah, feeling about the book. <laughs> so I'm going to finish reading it because it is an easy unwind book at night. And um, yeah, but that's where I am. I'm feeling kind of mad about it. So I'll let you know what happens. Okay, I did want to talk about more, but I realized I said the thing about like, if you don't want to find the spoilers. So I moved my camera and I'm going to put my hair up so that you can't tell that it's the same shot in case you were jumping ahead. Okay, so the other thing is that um, the book I'm going to read this weekend, other than Summer and Skagway, is Skylight Confessions by Alice Hoffman. Um, I don't know. I've got my lighting's terrible here because I've got overhead lighting on. We're having a very rainy, rainy March day here. Um, I don't know if I'm going to start this today. I might just read Summer and Skagway today. But I think my Saturday, Sunday read is going to be this one. And um, beyond that, I've decided that I'm going to try to wrap up this video on Sunday. I was originally going to wrap it up on Monday or Tuesday, but I think I'm going to wrap it up on Sunday uh, so I can get it out in time for when I want to get it out. So I don't know if I'll actually finish this, but I'll try and check in a couple more times and let you know what I think of this. But so far, you know, having a five-star read on a reading vlog is a pretty good deal. And then having one that you have qualms with is good to talk about. All right, I'll check in with you at some point again soon. It's Monday morning and I'm going to wrap up this vlog now, even though this ended up being kind of a short vlog and I feel like I didn't film like any other stuff I did besides read, but say la vie. So I ended up finishing two books and reading a very small portion of another. And I didn't really read yesterday, Sunday or Saturday. I had a really busy weekend. Like I was thinking I didn't have a busy weekend. I had like so much going on. And then last night the Oscars were on. So I watched those instead of reading. But let me tell you about what I did finish and start. So obviously I read Ruthless Files by Rebecca Ross and I really loved it. And you know what the nice thing about this is? I'm not still like emotional about it. Like I think this book was really good but it's, and it did make me cry when I was reading it, but I'm not still feeling like, like the heart pangs I get sometimes when I read books that are really sad. I think because I really liked the ending and I did start this book very much thinking, which characters do I think they're gonna kill off so I could like mentally prepare myself for it. And I was correct in some, and some that I thought they were gonna kill off, they survived, which is very exciting, but overall, I loved Ruthless Vows, five stars. I think that anyone who likes historical fantasy, even though I know that's not technically its subgenre because it's not a real historical place, but it just has the vibe of historical, would love this duology. Next on my Kindle, which just has a random ad on it, I did finish Summer in Skagway, which I'm gonna open up because I realize I don't remember the author's name. So let me just open up my library really quickly so I can tell you the author's name. Uh, the author is Kate Rid. Regnery, Regnery, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, and she has written so many books after I went on to Goodreads and um, went to see if the rest of the series was coming out, excuse me, which it is. Um, she's got like 50 some books on there. My feelings on this were a little bit like all over the place. One, I did think it was like a good relaxing contemporary to read and it didn't try to be a rom-com because I'm just like not a rom-com reader. Like if I'm gonna read a contemporary, I want it to be just like straightforward contemporary. On the other hand, there were a couple things that happened in it. One of which I already discussed in length in this vlog that sort of uh, didn't sit well with me. And then it has a very, very odd epilogue that's written from the point of view of the author like she's just speaking to you as a reader and tells you like, it felt almost like if it was the author was someone who you were friends with and you were like, I always wondered what happened to them in like five years. And they were like, oh, this is what happened. Which was kind of odd. It wasn't like a traditionally written epilogue. Which made me think that maybe the stuff that happens in the epilogue is gonna be in other books in the series. Cause there's like gonna be six, I think. And so that, but that was just kind of odd. So I think I ended up giving this 3.5 stars on Goodreads, which for me is like very middle of the road read. It was fine. Um, but you know, there were parts of it that I enjoyed. I really enjoyed the Alaska setting. I think that was really fun. Will I read more? I don't know. I went and looked at NetGalley and had a funny experience, which I'll banter about in a little bit. 
to see if any of the other ones were out and they weren't. And I was like, I don't think I'll continue checking NetGalley to see if they're out and I don't think I'll purchase them. But if I just find that I'm on NetGalley one day and one of them's on it, I might grab it. It was a nice thing to read and just sort of unwind at bedtime. Okay, and then lastly, if you watched my March TBR, I talked about how there were a couple books that I just want to read part of in March because I don't think I'm going to read the entire thing. And so on Saturday, when I was kind of like, I stayed up really late on Friday night and finished um, Summer Skyway because I couldn't fall asleep. So I was up to like one in the morning, which is late for me because I do wake up with my kids at like 6.30. Um, so I couldn't fall asleep and so I finished that. And then, so I didn't read on Saturday. We were very busy. But then Saturday night, I kind of wanted to read before bed. So I read just... Let me see how many pages it is. Eight pages, which is the first chapter of I Captured the Castle by Dodie Smith. This is a book that I want to read the first part in March, which the first part is 67 pages. And, you know, it was cute. The first chapter was really cute. It was funny. You meet the um, main character, uh, Cassandra, and her sister, whose name I'm forgetting right now. I'm going to see if I can find it quickly. Rose. You meet Rose and you meet Topaz, who's their father's second or third wife, I can't remember. She's married to their father, I think second wife. And they're, they're like destitute, but live in a castle. And Rose is like, I'm gonna go to London and sell my body. And I liked it, which I wasn't expecting that to be in a book that was written, I think, I looked up when this was written. No, I can't remember. 1954-ish? No, 1948, which seems like a funny time to have that in a book, not that it wasn't happening. But, uh, it's cute. I don't think it'll be hard to read, you know, 67 pages in a month. I enjoyed it. Before I technically wrap up, let me just quickly tell you about what happened at NetGalley. I was looking at NetGalley and um, for some romance, even though I shouldn't be doing that, but I was. And this cover came up and it was called um, Forbidden Nights with the Pyramidic. I'll put the cover up here. And I see the cover and I'm like, I know them. I know those people. And I'm like, who are they? I know the, I know them. I know both of them. I know that woman and I know that man. And like, literally, I'm like searching my brain, trying to figure out if these are people who like live in my town or like I went to high school with or college. I'm just staring at them. And all of a sudden, it hits me like a like a lightning bolt. Um, this couple was on the cover of one of my books when I was Lucy Hudson. <laughs> They're on my cover in the, the Star Spangled Weekend, which is a... Very quick, like hundred page uh, contemporary romance, like about a couple that meets over a long weekend over the Fourth of July. But it was so funny to me that I'm staring at these people, thinking that I know them, but because they're like out of context on a different cover, I'm not realizing that they're just cover models that were on one of my books. It was a weird, a weird feeling. Okay, back to my wrap up. I hope you enjoyed following me along reading these books. I hope that my pitch for The Hedge Witch was interesting to you. And if it is, I will in the uh, description, of course, put a link to pre-order it. Um, right now, the pre-order is only available for the ebook, but uh, as soon as the paperback's available, I'll definitely put it at, on, in the descriptions of later videos. And yeah, I hope that right now you are reading something great in March. On my February wrap up, a lot of us talked about how February was not a great reading month. And I hope you're all turning that around. I certainly am. Um, I was trying to think of how many books I've already read because I read two before. So I've, I've already read four books and I've started one and I'm feeling, you know, better about this reading month considering in February I read a total of four books and I'm not even at the halfway point of March yet. So I hope you're having a better reading month this March, or maybe the same as February, if you had a great one in February. And as always, I hope you're in the middle of a good book, about to start reading a good book, or about to start writing a great book. I'll see you soon.